Today we're going to be unboxing, setting up, and reviewing the Rig H100XX headset for Xbox and PC. Micro USB port on the back in 2022? I'm going to show you how to fully enable Dolby Atmos surround sound for this headset. Over here in settings, this is where you're going to spend the majority of your time. Then I'm going to cover the pros, cons, limitations, and who I think this headset is right for, as it is rather limited in the content that does use Dolby Atmos. This I also detect some unspoken. Let's get it. In full transparency, this product was sent for review. However, this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. So if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement for their next version, you're going to hear about it. Hold on. We can't game yet. I got to grab my rig. Battery's low. I need to go refuel my rig. I.e. I need to put this thing in its charger dock. Did I say charger dock? I did. It has one. But this set of cans will be sitting on my sweaty here holes a lot. So I'm actually a big fan of this packaging because it's not plastered with lime green like every other licensed Xbox product. You have the little stamp and sigil down here saying, hey, Big Daddy Phil Spencer knows we're selling this product. You have a little lime green trim down here. But overall, the box is white and black. Very tasteful. Very classy very elegant. This is for Xbox Series S and X, Xbox One, and Windows 10 PCs. They don't list Windows 11 on there, but I'm sure it'll work with Windows 11 as well. And guess what? These suckers have surround sound. What kind of surround sound? There's like seven types. Dolby Atmos. You of course have that base station, which is going to be a charging dock and also give you output to your Xbox or PC. And you have a USB wireless adapter. Now this thing looks a little large. I was hoping for a tiny dongle because I usually plug these into the front of my tower here and I don't want some big old stick of gum looking thing hanging off the front of my PC. See, it's ugly and I'm clumsy. I might accidentally hit it and break it. And their slogan over here resonates with me and I feel it to my core. Gear up, get good. If I had a nickel for every time my boys told me to get good in a first person shooter, I might actually be good. And on this side, it reminds you that this is trusted by the pros. Who these pros are, I don't know. And are they trustworthy themselves? I'm not sure about that either. Now getting into this box here, I might not even need the blade. I think you can just peel this off with the deadly weapons that the Lord gave you. Wow, zers. There is a strong chemical smell coming off this product. Not a big deal though. If I would have known, I would have put a respirator on. So you have this plain unbranded cardboard box here. And if I were a betting woman, I would say that there's going to be accessories in here. This is your base station. I was wrong. These are just here to keep your products from rattling around. You do have a couple of stickers on here to protect this from dust, debris, and micro scratches as this is piano black. It looks nice, but gloss or piano black collects micro scratches and fingerprints like nobody's business. Micro USB port on the back in 2022? I was expecting USB-C or lightning bolt or something, but hey, USB-C does still exist in this day and age. So we've got a relic from the Elden days back there, which is pretty cool. And you do have a slot here for your USB dongle. So if you're not going to plug it directly into your PC, you can actually plug it into this base station here and then just plug this in. And then you have your four prongs right here for charging your headset when you drop it into the dock and you have a little bit of branding in the front here that says rig. Plastics do feel a little bit cheap and chintzy, but facts are you're never going to be touching this. It will be on display in your desk, but you're probably going to set it and forget it and just drop your cans in there. Little basic egg carton here with a rig logo emblossed, emblossed, embossed or emblazoned on the top there. All right, little silica gel packet here. Make sure that your children and pets do not get a hand of this because it will rob their lungs of oxygen and they will no longer be with us. By the way, there's a trash bin under there. I'm not just like throwing it on the ground. Laid out in front of me, I have more documentation than any product should ever come with, but it's okay because they are here to help. They have 24 hour customer support. But one thing to note, there is a Nacon brand right here in the top right, which means I do believe that this is a sister company or offshoot product of Nacon who's been making gaming peripherals for years. Then you have a quick start guide. Okay, opens up like Christopher Columbus's map. Very nice. And it very simply breaks down setting this thing up with some very descriptive pictures and a little bit of orange color. Now, the purpose of this card is to remind you this does have Dolby Atmos. So install it on your Xbox or Windows 10. And then it tells you how to do that back here. Three steps. You have some stickers here. So you can go ahead and plaster these on the Tukus bumper of your car or maybe slap them on the side of your PC tower. You've got your dock already collecting a layer of dead skin follicles. You have your USB port here, which does have a nice little dust cover on the tip. It is branded rig and has this nice little textured design and you do have a switch on the side for PC and then a controller logo which of course means for Xbox use and then you have a micro USB cable gross I would like to see USB-C a lot lighter than I thought but not in a cheap or chintzy way undurable or flimsy it just feels light which is good because that is one of the main factors of comfort with a headset is the weight. The second being the quality of the ear cups and the third being the quality of the headband and if there is any clamping 
pressure around your temples or around the top of your dome. So this is actually a first. I've never utilized this angle for doing a review and I don't know why because this is a really cool backdrop. This section of my desk really never gets utilized. We should do this more often. That's what she never said. Okay, so you have your dongle, which you can plug directly into your tower or your Xbox. But if you're gonna be utilizing this dock station, which I recommend you do, you can just plug this in right here. Make sure you remove the dust cover first and your headset's just gonna dock like this when it's charging on your desk. What drops right in there very easily, much like the Astro A50. Actually, this drops in even easier and gets a nice satisfying click to let you know that it is properly docked and charging. Not to mention, I'm sure this light will illuminate as well. Now I mentioned it is very lightweight, but doing the flex test, it does feel quite durable. I don't like that. Generally to adjust the ear cups up and down for different head sizes, you will either have distinct steps in some kind of a ratchet mechanism or headsets like the Steel Series use this little Velcro strap here. But this one uses a design I've never seen before. It's a rig, so it's got some kind of rigging that you need to do where you pop it out like this. I don't like this at all because I could easily see somebody accidentally ripping out this cord and ruining their headset. Plus, you only get three different levels of adjustment on each side like that. Granted, you're probably gonna keep it even, you know, step two and step two over here, unless you've got like a misshapen head or one ear's higher than the other, which nothing wrong if that is the case with your your dome. You only have three levels of adjustment here. Okay, however, I don't think that's really gonna matter too much because this is a self-adjusting head strap. So when you put it on, it should in essence just tighten up to your head. So you have these three levels of adjustment and then this will do the rest for you. It is also labeled R for right and L for left on the inside. Well, never mind, there is no L on that side, but there's an R on this side. You can deduce or assume that the other side is gonna be for the left. And then if you ever wanna take this out and I guess replace it or wash it perhaps, it just pops out like this. but I'd like it in there. So you have no controls on the right ear cup. However, you do have the four holes, which will align with the pins for charging. All your controls are gonna be on the left side over here. You do have your microphone on the left side, which is not removable. However, it is flip up to mute and it is incredibly flexible. So you can get it right where you want in front of your suck hole. And it also has a little branding on the inside that says chat to let you know that that's what your microphone is for talking to people. And you do have a little subtle branding here as well. It says 800. And then you do have some nice faux carbon fiber on the ear cups. You have your USB-C port for charging if you're not gonna use the dock. This tiny button that is labeled with a microphone is not to mute the microphone. Again, this is flip up to mute. However, this is for microphone monitoring and it does have three levels plus off of microphone monitoring. So if you wanna hear your own voice repeated back into your headset, you have mic monitoring there. You do have your volume up and down wheel, which does have a nice resistance. There's no real distinct steps or anything, but it does have a nice resistance and it is a nice rubberized coating on there. But one thing I really don't like is it is an infinitely spinning wheel, i.e. it doesn't bottom out at zero with a nice distinct step at the 50% mark. It just infinitely spins and then I'm assuming it'll make some kind of a chime or chirp inside the headset when you hit 100 or 50%. And then you do have your power button right here with a small LED light that will give you status updates. And then you have your game and chat blend. And this is exactly how I'd like to see the volume wheel work where it does stop at the top and bottom. It doesn't infinitely spin. And then you get a nice distinct step in there at the 50% mark when you are at a perfect 50-50 blend. Cool, how's it feel? Initial impressions, it is stupid comfortable. And that is partially because this is a very light headset. Wait on screen here, pop it up in front of my face. It is incredibly light. The ear cups feel very soft and supple. And the headband is also really comfortable because I simply can't even feel it. Granted, I go through about a half a can of hairspray each day. So it's basically like a helmet. So that might be why I can't feel anything on the top of my head, but it is very comfortable. And the auto adjusting head strap does do a good job of positioning it right where you need for your head size. Let's get it paired up to the PC and go through the software suite. While the rig headset is charging for the first time, which by the way, it did come out of the box completely dead, which is pretty rare, but it happens occasionally. I'm going to show you how to install the software program that you need to activate Dolby Atmos surround in your headset. On your Xbox One or Series console or on a Windows 10 or 11 PC, open up the Microsoft Store and on the search bar at the top, type in Dolby. And the first result you're going to see is Dolby Access. It is a free program and install this. Now, one thing I want to note about this program is that it is meant to integrate seamlessly with the Xbox Game Pass launcher, whether you're on the Xbox console or a PC, as you see, I have it pinned down here in my taskbar. Basically, when you launch any of these games, and there are more, the headset is automatically going to engage Dolby Atmos and optimize it for the best sound profile for that game. As you can see, I launched the program for the first time. I also right-clicked it and pinned it down here to my taskbar for easy access because I'm all about that life. As you can see, this gamer chick over here is absolutely shell-shocked by the sound profile that she's getting out of that rig headset over there. She must be watching one of my YouTube videos. She is awestruck right now. And this is exactly what I mentioned earlier that Dolby Atmos automatically seamlessly integrates with Game Pass on PC. Now, you can buy this however, 
However, if you have a headset that is approved with Dolby Atmos, it is going to be free. You just connect your headset. Okay, so I just powered this bad boy on. I had a nice female voice whisper in my ear. Power on, headset connected. It's very soothing. And this is the software program you're going to use to control your new headset. The product tab isn't going to give you anything besides letting you know that your new headset is connected and ready to use and what headset you're on. This is a Rig 800 Pro HX. Now, there are a few versions of this headset, so as not to get confused, the model that I have is the HX, which is built for Xbox and PC. And according to the landing pages on Amazon, this is the only one that does support Dolby Atmos virtual surround. There is also the HS model, which is the identical price of $150, but will have some blue branding and is meant for PlayStation as well as PC. They're also currently in development of the HD model, which is specifically for PC and is going to be more of a high-end headset. I have expressed my desire to get that unit sent for an early preview or review once it's been released to the public. Over here in settings, this is where you're going to spend the majority of your time. Performance mode, personally, I would leave this off. This is equivalent to superhuman hearing on Turtle Beach headsets, and basically what this does, boosts or amplifies mid-range frequencies where footsteps are going to be heard, but it makes your game sound completely unnatural and not immersive whatsoever, because it's basically just targeting footsteps, which you're going to hear anyway if you're using situational awareness. By turning this slider off, you will get access to the intelligent equalizer system. Off is going to be a flat curve, warm is going to be a little bit on the low end, balance is going to be a low and mid-end boost, and detailed is going to be what we call an S-curve, where it's going to boost up your lows, cut out your muddy mids, and then give a little bit of clarity and presence in the treble or high end as well. Personally, my comfort zone is either off with a flat EQ so I can hear the most natural or organic sound or detailed if a headset comes out of the box a little bit flat. For now, we're going to leave it on off and click apply. Now, one thing I really like is that you can set up different preferences for playing games, watching movies, or listening to music. So as you can see, I've just set it to a flat curve across the board. I've enabled voice clarity mode, which should give you a little bit more presence and clarity in your voice through the microphone built into the headset. And then you do have three custom profiles over here, which allow you to set up a 10 band equalizer, which I do like is actually labeled with the frequency range instead of just being like, oh, band one, band six. It actually tells you what the frequency range is, which is really cool. Sound virtualizer is going to be artificial or 3D surround sound. And then volume leveler, I would leave this off. What this is going to do is amplify your quiet sounds and reduce or minimize the loud sounds such as explosions and gunshots. However, I want explosions and gunshots to be loud and jarring, and I want whispers and wind rustling through the trees to be quiet. So I'm going to leave that off and I'm going to hit enable. I also detect some unspoken questions to our benefit. This is a microphone test with the Rig H100XX with the microphone about one inch away from my mouth. This is a microphone test of the Rig H100HX with the microphone about two inches away from my mouth. You would never play like this. You want this closer to your mouth like that. Now as for the pros and cons of the Rig 800HX headset, we're going to start with the cons and get those out of the way. First of all, it is micro USB, which in 2022, the golden standard is USB-C or lightning cable if it's an Apple device. So it'd be nice if their next version, for example, the HD, which I mentioned they are in development of, uses USB-C. This next one, could be deemed personal preference, but I know a lot of headphone users, myself included, do not like a volume wheel that is infinitely scrolling. We would prefer one that bottoms out at zero, pops out at 100, and then has a nice distinct click at the 50% mark instead of just scrolling indefinitely. And the next one is this doesn't have any kind of a 3.5 millimeter output off of the dock to plug this into a mixer, for example, the TC Helicon Go XLR. So there are currently only five or six wireless headsets on the market that do support a mixer because you do need that audio out on the back of the dock that will plug into the input in the back of your mixer. So for streamers and YouTubers that use an XLR mixer for their microphone setup, that is a huge con that they will not be able to use these. I'm specifically talking about using these wirelessly. You can, of course, use the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and plug that directly into the back of your mixer. However, this is a wireless headset. And when you're in this price point, you want to be able to use a wireless headset as intended. Unless you set it up in Streamlabs or OBS like I did for this video, where you have the routing for your desktop audio, which is going to be the Rig 800 headset, and then your mixer separately. But you will not be able to hear your voice or any of your music that you have playing through Spotify or be able to control your volume levels through those faders. Now, as for the pros, because in my opinion, there is a fair amount of them. First of all, cosmetically, I think it is a very handsome headset. It is primarily black with a little bit of faux carbon fiber that doesn't look tacky or cheap. It actually looks quite nice. Secondly, I do like the auto adjusting head strap. It did a phenomenal job. At first, I was a little worried that it only had three size adjustments. However, you really don't even need to mess with those. Those are just for major adjustments. If you have a very large head or a very small head for 90% of users, you keep it in the middle setting and that auto adjust strap will do a perfect job of adjusting to your head size. Next up, the volume wheel does affect Windows volume. So instead of having to set your PC volume and then having a separate
separate slider on the volume wheel. Whenever you adjust the volume on your headset, you will see it displayed in Windows with the volume level. So volume is controlled in Windows. Next up, the headset is very comfortable. This comes down to very plush, soft ear cups, as well as that headband that I mentioned earlier. There is virtually no clamping pressure, and I could wear these for long gaming sessions without any uncomfortability. Next up, the dock design is good. It holds the USB stick, so you just plug the dock in and it will pair to your PC. And also, I do like how easily it drops in or cradles into the charger, as opposed to my Asteroid 50s, which are a great headset. However, you have to do a little bit of wiggling or finagling to get it to drop into the charging cradle. A lot of times I've come back to a dead headset because I thought it was charging overnight. Next up, the microphone is a good design as it is flip up to mute and it is also very flexible. It also has three different levels of microphone monitoring, but I keep that off because I don't want to hear myself replayed into my headset. And the last pro is that the audio quality is insanely good in content that supports Dolby Atmos, which brings me into my final point, which is that you are very limited in the content that does support Dolby Atmos. Unlike other virtual surrounds out there, such as Windows Sonics, THX Spatial, and Dirac 7.1, Dolby Atmos has to use content that is Dolby Atmos approved because of how it works. It is object-based positioning to where 180 objects on screen can have different positions that'll simulate, okay, that helicopter's overhead and to the left. There's a bird chirping forward and to the right. If a game does not support Dolby Atmos, you are merely using this headset in 2.1 stereo, which still sounds good, but you're not getting that virtual surround, and Dolby Atmos, unlike other surround sound technologies, has no way of virtually pumping that in because it has to be in the native game or movie file. Having said that, this headset and the Dolby Atmos on board will do its best guess of pinpointing situational directions from left, right, and center channels in all games that are recorded in 7.1 or 5.1 virtual surround. This headset will still have a wide and dynamic sound stage as opposed to a typical 2.1 stereo headset. So think of it like upscaling on a 4K TV. It's going to do the best to take 1080p or 720p content and up res that to 4K. Just like this headset is going to take 5 7.1, 7.1, and 2.1 stereo sound and try and pinpoint the direction. So while it's not a full 3D spatial experience like Dolby Atmos, it is still going to sound substantially better than a typical 2.1 stereo headset. As for Xbox and PC, as long as you are playing newer release games, a lot of them do support Dolby Atmos, but just to double check and make sure the content that you are playing does have Dolby Atmos, there is usually an icon next to it in the game launcher, or you can do a simple Google search, or if you are using this on PC, whenever you launch the Dolby Atmos Access app, it will show you a list of all the games that currently have compatibility. So for me, that becomes make or break as to if you buy this headset or not. Do you play games that support Dolby Atmos? However, if you are playing games, movies, etc. that do support Dolby Atmos, this headset sounds phenomenal. And when mixed with the previous pros that I mentioned, for $150, it is a solid buy. In order to make sure you are getting Dolby Atmos, you do need to install the Dolby Atmos Access app on your Xbox or PC as I did in this video. And you also need to make sure that what you're watching or playing has Dolby Atmos. When you do that, this headset sounds absolutely phenomenally and performs better than any $150 headset I have used. So my final verdict or conclusion, if you do access a lot of content, games, and movies that do support Dolby Atmos, this is a fantastic headset. If you primarily play older games before Dolby Atmos was a thing, then this is a good stereo headset, but it is not a surround headset. So if that's what you're looking for, that immersive experience where you feel like you're placed into the game world, you're not going to get that without Dolby Atmos. Overall, I am very impressed with this headset and I would recommend it. There is a link to their Amazon landing page as well as their website in the description below, of course. And drop in the comment section below your opinion of this headset and what surround technology you prefer. Is it THX Spatial? Is it just the Windows Sonic baked into Xbox? Maybe you like Dirac, like in the Haymaker headset I just reviewed. Or maybe you're all about that Dolby Atmos life. If that is the case, I would recommend subscribing as I am in the process of reviewing the Sonos Arc soundbar, which does support Dolby Atmos, and that will be coming soon. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord, and check me out at Twitch.tv where I go live. Every other leap year 
on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my ph balance is on point just kidding starting june i'm going to be live streaming a lot thanks for watching this has been ak40 kevin hosting gamer heaven and i'll see you tomorrow because i upload daily all the time 60 percent of the time sometimes most of the time peace